Senate denies creating new states, gives condition for creation of 20 new states. And later on the show, Nigeria fighter jet falls kidnapping of com commuters in Guso area of Zamfara as bandits kidnap Niger State Commissioner for information, kill five persons in Kaduna State. I'll be hanging out with Babajide Koladi Otitoju and Gani Kairi Balugu, while Mahmoud Jaga will join us from our Abuja studio. So if you're ready, journalist standout start now. Thank you for staying with us. Before we go into the main discussion, let's talk about an issue of public concern. A chief magistrate court in Yaba, Lagos, has remanded the 300-level mass communication student of the University of Lagos, Chidima Ojuku, and one Adidakbo Kwadri in prison custody over alleged murder of chief executive officer of Super TV, Usifu Ataga, in June. Julie, this is an unfolding drama and definitely We've not heard, seen the last of this, and yes. they are still gathering their facts. With the coming into this um, other name, Adida Kwakwadri. Mm. So, it seems um, now that the police um, have established a case against Chidima and against uh, Adida Kwakwadri. We don't know whether it's a prima facie case that they were established, but. Been the able police to mention have her name. every reason. They, they, they are convinced that both of them have something to do with the murder. So we just hope that the, the police will do a thorough job and this matter will be ultimately laid to rest. There have been too many murders that are unsolved in our country. Mm. We've had enough. So we hope that um, the truth will be known in, in the fullness of time. Chike, be the gruesome way this man was murdered, and uh, Nigerians are very interested to see how um, things will unfold, as in how they will unravel the mystery behind this murder. Well, I think that the first thing that we realized was the fact that the police are now doing the right thing. When they started, they were putting the cart before the horse. They were taking conventions uh, with camera available, so that which, of course, under some laws. I'm not a lawyer, but I know that you can say that those are confessions got under duress. I wish you know, cannot hold up in court. So I'm very happy that the police are now going through the normal process expected. Investigate, arrest, then prosecute. Enough of media, media problems that we face. I'm very glad they are doing this, and I hope more will come out in the next few days. All right. The sad relationship between resident doctors and the federal government has degenerated over alleged threats of no pay, no work, mass and mass sack. The striking doctors are adamant. As president of the Association of Resident Doctors, Uyilawa Okishe Henyi, said the threats by the Minister of Labor and Employment, Chris Ngige, would not compel them to call off the nationwide strike. Ngigi has also vowed not to meet with them again on how to resolve the logjam. This is not healthy. Jude, if the minister that is meant to uh, lead the mediation and then um, see the way forward, if the minister is saying that he's not going to meet them again. Now, taking, not taking into conclusion that across the country, we have casualties every day. We don't have statistics to prove how many people will be dying on death row and as a result of this striking um, resident doctors. So this kind of nonchalant attitude or saying they're not going to meet them again, this seems very arrogant to me. Very callous. It's, it's very arrogant. <coughs> and um, ordinarily the minister should resign. If he does not think that um, that job if he cannot give his best, if he cannot come down from his Olympian heights uh -uh. and do the job for which he gets paid, then he should resign. It's as simple as that. That's where that these people could even go back on strike after having signed a memorandum of agreement, yes. of action, I mean, In with April. the government on, on April 10. You, 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 you cajole them to, 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 to suspend their strike. 
and then you refuse to implement the demands that were agreed. I've had the uh, federal authorities put all the blame on the states, but that is being dishonest. Some of the issues that we are talking about have to do with uh, the <laughs> federal authorities. For example, if one of the big issues for which they are on strike is the issue of um, hazard allowance. Are they saying that, oh, this hazard allowance thing that they have not paid is that is the state alone that are to blame? You got into an agreement with them that you will pay 33% of the basic salary of doctors. But up to now, you've not implemented it. Since April 10, you've not implemented it. That's taking them uh, so, yeah, lightly. That's, that's treating them shabbily. And now they've gone on strike. Is it, is it because Public officers, their children don't go to public hospitals. Mm. Is that why we are saying this? Because if every one of us is mandated to use public hospitals, yes, including our president and everyone, will a minister sense. will a minister have the cheek to say, "Oh, I, I'm, I don't even want to talk to them anymore"? How do you even wash yourself clean of what we are going through at this time? Did you do your own bit? The answer is no. Honor your word. It's as simple as that. If you honor your word, or even come to them, come to the middle. I'm sure these guys are not reasonable. They are, they are gentlemen. They will, they will call off the strike. But uh, talking, uh, using fighting words at a time when you are supposed to be conciliatory, I don't think is dignifying. And I don't think... It exhausts the minister. Who does the minister think he wants to impress by saying that I will not talk to them? I told my children that they should not join the, the, the strike. And my children are doctors. I told them they should not join the strike. <laughs> Who is impressed by all of that? Stay. Get the doctors to go back to work. When you get them to go back to work, people will be convinced that you've done your work. That's what Nigerians are after. If, it's, you know, if you are talking about other sector that is not as essential and critical as medical doctors, seeing the brain drain we are witnessing in that industry, you will not even have that, um, the audacity to come up with no, uh, no work, no pay uh, policy. But you must understand that the same minister we are talking about once told us that we have excess requirements, that we have too many doctors and that uh, some of them should go and do things. That turned out to be a lie, a big fat lie. Because, because you are a doctor, doesn't mean that you know where the shoe pinches. You've been in politics for 20 years. I don't think you've been a full time practi practitioner for the last, was the last time 25 years. So the problem they face now is not the same problem you face in your day. Yes. And that's the problem we are facing as a people. The minister has uh, put himself in the place of the federal government and think that it is the state. That's the way he talks. He talks as if he's the state, and that without him, nothing will get done. Because we are, you and I know that the residency is a critical aspect of medicine. Because they are between the students and then the specialists. And they form the bulk of doctors in our country. The more you isolate them, the more problems we have. I think the problem really is the minister, not the doctors. The, 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 okay, let, let, let's join uh, Mahmoud Ataga. Jaga. Yes, Mahmoud Jaga. What do you make of the minister's statement, Mahmoud? Mm -hmm. Yes. The minister is threatening not to meet with the striking resident doctors again. Well, that was uh, <coughs> a terrible thing uh, for the minister to say. You cannot take that uh, position as long as the matter is not solved and the doctors do not call off the strike people are dying there is a lot of uh, inconvenience so he has to continue to engage with the doctors no matter how inconvenient it is but the truth is that uh, dr ingige has never proved to be the best uh, negotiator in these uh, situations because uh, he often takes a very combative uh, position not only with the doctors but with the other unions that were on strike over the years and uh, it is not the healthiest 
It is, uh, of course, uh, frustrating that uh, doctors and uh, sometimes lecturers, judiciary workers, everybody goes on strike almost every year. It is not the best. We have to find the best ways of uh, resolving this problem before they resort to strike. With respect to the other issue you raised about uh, non-payment of salary during strikes, let's remember that that one has been low for quite some time in Nigeria. And uh, really, I think it is uh, important for labor unions to realize that no matter how serious your grievances are, any time you instruct your members to stop working, then you have to make arrangements to pay them. Uh, you cannot withdraw your services and still demand to be paid. In other countries, labor has a strike fund, which it accumulates over the years, and whenever it calls a strike, then it pays its members for the period of the strike. But it's not really right to go on strike indefinitely, sometimes like in the case of ASU nine months, and still demand as part of the resolution to be paid for that period when you are not working. No, 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 no. That is not the law and it's also not uh, questionable. Mm, no, but when you look at the, Dr. Chris Gige is a medical doctor, the Minister of State for Health is a medical doctor, the Minister of Health, these are medical doctors. A lot of people feel that they should be sympathetic to this association and they should understand what is actually going on. That look, priority should be given to this sector and they should make a case that if an agreement has been signed since April. Yes, that's the, that's the uh, problem. I want to believe that some of those problems even this ministers cannot solve. We've got to brush aside bureaucracy in solving some very critical problems um, bedeviling our nation. For example, even when you get into an agreement to pay, how about cash backing? How about the long period that it takes for money to be released? Hmm. We are in a country where budget performance is anchored on the release of funds. Funds are sometimes not released until the third quarter. Mm -hmm. So how can some projects be implemented fully when funds don't get released in good time? So if we can solve that problem as well, if we can reduce the time within which decisions can be reached, and um, money gets paid, then some of these problems will no longer be there. Because I know that even when you take the decision, then the issue of uh, funds will come in. For example, some of the demands that the, the uh, lecturers are making, funding is critical. So a minister could actually do his best, hammer out a deal with striking workers. The finance ministry still has to do its job mm. of ensuring that, okay, money gets released to ensure that the agreement reached is implemented. So, largely, bureaucracy gets in the way of even effective running mm. of, uh, of the system. So, we have to um, deal with that. The How issue... About negotiating, that all these stakeholders should be part of the negotiation, Ministry of Finance, people that will be there to give you cash back in. Yes, that is, that's a uh, good suggestion, but it still wouldn't... Um, Change, uh, uh, Change the, the process. Uh, uh, yes, the process, the devil is in the process. So we've seen even finance ministers promise that, okay, we'll release a certain amount of money, and it doesn't get released on time. Because it's not something that gets done by maybe... Uh, um, fiat. Uh, by, by fiat. So this is the thing. The system itself mm. needs to work better. The, the, the wheel of, uh, of, of progress needs to run better for us to be able to achieve some of our aims. And the governors of some states that are owing doctors, medical doctors of all people, 
in excess of six, seven, eight months salary. What? They need to be spoken to because it's part of where a governor fails to pay uh, workers regularly. Remember, they, they have opened um, state universities that they cannot adequately fund. And some of these state universities also have teaching, teaching hospitals. hospitals. Mm -hmm. So we, those doctors work in those hospitals and they too are subjected to the, the, the pains Substantive that get pains. inflicted on workers mm. in those states. So those governors, those, those states, also need to be spoken to. It, it, it's, it's difficult. Even if the federal government uh, uh, team hammers out a deal with these doctors, the issue of go, uh, doctors in some states being hold several it's months uh, about salary will also also be, the, the I'm sure they deliberately included it in the negotiations as a way of helping their colleagues. Because they were saying, look, these are our colleagues, we, can't, uh, we, we, we really need to come to their, uh, to their aid. So uh, they need to talk to some of uh, these governors because the demands that are being made are genuine and they, they must find the funds to pay. Jikimi, let's look at the effects. You know, we are very poor with keeping records, statistics, yes. data. Yes. Uh, but I can tell you the number of people that would have lost in the last 72 hours in the country. Not only that, remember the number of people that cannot be admitted. Remember, you are talking about those already admitted who have to let go. That you have to go home, there is no doctor to take care of you. Mm. That will probably be in their thousands. Imagine the number of people who fell sick in the last 72 hours who cannot go to the hospital. Mm. There's something on, on, I think it's on TVC, of a man uh, somewhere in Yola who took his father to the hospital. And the doctor told him to his face that he cannot treat the man because they are on strike. And the man died on the floor. The man, I think it's on TV, or one of the TV stations. Imagine that level of callousness mm -hmm. that you require, because you took the Hippocratic Oath, basically, mm -hmm. to protect lives. That's why you become a doctor. That's the first thing you do. Government have their own issues, of course. but. You cannot see somebody dying and then apply civil service mentality in applying your job to that person. That to me is the danger because our people will now revert back to traditional healers to take self-medication. Mm. And that is even more dangerous going down the line. Because already you know cholera is back. And the disease is back. COVID is here. So many things are back. Those are... People are dying in the Federal Capital Territory in their hundreds for diseases that have been wiped out technically 10 years ago. Mm. I mean, which, this is a planned city that mm. cannot even take care of waterborne diseases. Imagine the doctors now being on strike. Mamu Jaga, Mamu Jaga, we, we, we seem not to value human lives in Nigeria, both on the part of government and even on the part of the striking resident doctors. Well, uh, <coughs> certainly we can say that because, I mean, uh, almost every hour, I mean, what is even the quality of our health care when the doctors are not on strike? There is still a shortage of medical personnel, shortage of facilities, uh, lack of uh, access to drugs and dressings. People don't have the money to pay for even basic services. So those problems were there all along. And you can imagine when the doctors work out that is why it is difficult for doctors to have public sympathy when they go on strike, no matter how genuine their case appears to be. Because for somebody who brings, like you said, his father to the hospital, and uh, you say you are on strike because of hazard allowance or, or even non-payment of salary, I mean, that does not make sense to somebody who is about to lose his father or some other uh, loved one. Now, what is not to say that the government itself at all levels should not be alive to its uh, responsibilities and toy with a very serious sector like uh, health care, uh, maybe unlike education. You know, education takes many decades to see the result. If the schools are closed for one year, we may not see the effect until maybe 15, 20 years from now. But in the case of hospitals, if they close for even a day, 
uh, the consequences are immediate. Uh, people die, people are sick, people are... So you are absolutely uh, correct that uh, we do not seem to value uh, human life and human health uh, in our situation. These doctors are also saying that they are among the poorest uh, uh, paid um, doctors, least paid doctors in the world. That's the allowances. And anytime you keep talking about that 5,000 era as an allowance, I, I can't just wrap my head around it. That's what, 5,000 era? Yes, sir. Uh, and um, it's been there since 1991. They've, they've made efforts to have it increased during Jonathan's era. They wanted to move it to 7,000 naira. They didn't succeed. Uh, uh, 5,000 uh, to 7,000. Since 1991. So you look at what inflation has. Yes. Don't in fact, inflation in the last three years has been really tremendous. Hmm. You know, the numbers are scary. Hmm. So now you are talking about digits? what you could do with 5,000 even last year. You can't do it this year. Mm -mm. Because COVID did its worst and insecurity is also a critical factor in the um, in the optic and in inflationary figures in our country so uh, it makes sense to increase the hazard allowance because somebody risks his life to save lives Even increasing that it's person is very very important the mm -hmm. one who puts his life on the line to save the lives world. yes now They've lost 19 of their colleagues, you know, to COVID while in the line of duty. The, those, those colleagues, are, they, are, they, 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 they are complaining that even the entitlement of those colleagues, mm. government is yet to pay. So there are reasons why workers go on strike. We don't want a nation where people, workers go on strike many times or frequently. But our government needs to do a lot more. Our government needs to do a lot more to ensure that uh, these strikes do not happen. And uh, we, we hope that the minister will go back to negotiate uh, with, this, uh, with these doctors. Otherwise, the president should mandate someone else to do it. We can't leave. He's uh, issued this kind of threats in the past, and it amounted to nothing. And you beat you some know? person to go back to the negotiation? <laughs> yeah, he's issued this kind of threats in the past. And not because these workers, they know the strength. They know their strength. They know that, look, you cannot hire people to replace them. It is not practicable. So you just have to find a way to resolve this. Come to the middle ground, resolve it, and stop uh, uh, backing out directives uh, as if they, they, well, they, work, they work under your roof. Hmm. All right. We take this break. When we come back, we'll discuss more. It's still journalist hangout. We'll be right back after this breather. Stay with us, please. Still on to journalist hangout. We're reaching you from TVC News here, and I still have Babaji de Kolade Utoju and Ganika de Balogu in the studio in Lagos, and Mahmoud Jaga is in Abuja. Gentlemen, our pension for peddling falsehoods reached an alarming level at the weekend over rumored creation of 20 additional states in Nigeria. But the Senate has debunked the rumor. The spokesman of the upper legislative chamber, that Senator Ajibola Bashiru, said the Constitution Review Committee never made such proposal, saying the Constitution is clear on the process required for state creation. Julie, I don't know, even the, you see our national, they, they will still take this story. The senators, they are on um, vacation, and I know those ones that they've been given the responsibility of um, reviewing the constitution. This is, this sounds so ludicrous. 20 yes. more states to yes. what we have. We, we sat down here, and some people came up with the lying propaganda that the the Supreme Court had given the Bune led um, um, the theatrical committee the all clear. Whereas no such thing happened. The Supreme Court didn't sit. And even in his judgment, there was no consequential 
remark that was made to that effect. But people went to town with it. Hmm. In a season when clearly even journalists are not doing their work of um, due, diligence. due diligence and uh, filtration and even gatekeeping very well. So these days when you see an headline, as a journalist, the first thing to do is simply to first doubt it. F doubt it. Don't just believe. Because it's so easy to mislead people. Falsehood is now not just walking on two legs, but his legs are nimble. So people just get deceived by all kinds and of stories. So yes. And when I saw this, I was like, what? When did this happen? Ah. So, but I'm happy that the uh, Senate didn't waste time. They got uh, their spokesman, our own Najibola Bashi, to quickly mm. deny it and remind Nigerians of the fact that it's a lot easier in today's Nigeria for the camel to pass through the eye of the needle than to have states created. Mm. Military regimes, they will have their the IFRC meeting or mm. PRC meeting as a the case may be, and they will agree. The map will even be drawn overnight. They will agree, okay, we are creating so so number of this states. This will be the state capital of this state. Uh -huh, this is where it will be. Just Nobody that. will argue mm. if you put a state capital at the end Extreme. of a state. Extreme. Just as it happened in the case of Delta, okay. nobody will ask questions. Ah, shouldn't this for administrative convenience have been in the middle of the state? Nobody will ask questions. If you are planning to create Adeja state, hmm. and then there was a disagreement, you then made up your mind that, no, no, we are not going to create Adeja state anymore. We are creating Jigawa no. state. Nobody will ask questions. People could in anger then go and attack some people that they felt caused that to happen. But Nigerians won't ask questions. The military have shown that they are, it is a lot easier for them to create states than uh, civilian regions. And some of these stipulations that are there, if <laughs> we have to go, go into them, mm -hmm. you know that it's going to be difficult. Mm -hmm. For me, I don't even see why anybody should be talking about the creation of new states now. Well, whether we like it or not, once we start this kind of debate, Never it will not stop. Mm -hmm. People will be in one state and feel, ah, this state, we are marginalized here. Give them their own state. Some people will still complain. Mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you, might have the, you might have the same religion, the same ethnicity. It doesn't mean that you will not mm -hmm. have disagreements. After I look at a country like Somalia, the same religion, they are the same people, really. But mm -hmm. do they have peace? So that is your own people that came together to form a state. It's not a guarantee hmm. that you are going to have peace. It is when we commit to living happily and in peace with one another that we can guarantee peace. And then with peace, progress will happen. So uh, given the, <laughs> the uh, state of things in our country, I don't even think it makes sense to be talking about creating states. Even the ones down ground, a lot of people will see argue that 85 percent of them are at the verge of going bankrupt. That's in, if you want to check the health of the states right now, the ones that can afford minimum wage, the ones that can afford to pay their responsibilities and to carry out infrastructural development and everything, you can hardly count 10 states. I think it was Alakita Kondi who said that the purpose of state creation was for distribution of amenities to everybody. But in the last 20 years, and I know that that's no longer the case. States are now used basically as fifth door, by whoever is the reigning, reigning governor at that point in time. And so the things that states were created for in the first place no longer apply in this case. Number two, it doesn't make sense. Right now, the bureaucracy in Nigeria is top heavy. A lot of people are earning salaries and they are doing the same job across. Personally, I don't see why uh, the six states in the southwest should all have a minister, a minister for works. Or the central southeast, which is the equivalent of other states, should have five minister for works or five commissioner for works. 
There are things that should be brought together to solve the problem that we face. We keep creating more and more bureaucracy where we need to really sanitize our, our government. Personally, left to me, the local government should be transferred to zones, to regions, and regions should bring states together to minimize cost, not to increase it. You know, Julie, leave it, take it, everything we have right now. Some people are still telling us even to go back to regional arrangements <laughs> instead of uh, uh, this uh, bogus 36 states we have not to talk of. Some people are even saying for balance that um, a particular region will need to be, yes. while others are six, 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 one more state. Yes, mm. that they should have six, um, one additional state. Yes. Um, I am not against an extra state for the South South so that we can have South that balance. South East, sorry, so that we can have that balance. Um, I think they deserve an extra state. Not because it's such a big place geographically, no. But at least in terms of their population, is the third largest ethnic group in our country. So it's, uh, it makes sense to give them um, and it's, it's that for, for one state. So, yeah. so that yeah. we can have that balance. Every geopolitical zone, the same number of states. So that, that makes sense. And some of the people always say that the Southeast gets your change. Maybe when we do that, they won't no, be able to we, point at is. that one as, as evidence. So, but uh, generally speaking, I don't think that we need new states. I don't think. We can create more local governments as a way of you know, ensuring that um, um, we take development to every nook and cranny of a state. But I don't think creating new states is the... When, when, when the ones that we have created, they, they are literally bankrupt. Before the month ends, they, they, they run out of money. They have to go to Abuja and wait for... Uh, the distributable revenue from the center once again. Okay, so Mahmoud, I think Mahmoud is back. State creation, how desirable? Yes. Yes, people are conversing for more states to be created. Do you agree? <sighs> I don't think there is a lot of uh, sympathy in Nigeria for the creation of uh, more states because uh, anybody can see that the 36 states that we have at present, uh, most of them are not uh, even viable. We are still talking about uh, many months unpaid salaries, inability to pay hazard allowances and doctors are going on strike and uh, all kinds of things. So in that kind of situation, to ask for most states, it's uh, really to call for trouble. But, and you see, the procedure for creating states under the Constitution is very, very cumbersome, mm -hmm. uh, almost impossible. Mm -hmm. Actually, the only time that a state was created under a civilian dispensation mm -hmm. was when the Midwestern region was carved out of the Western uh, region in the 1960s. Since then, Every state creation exercise was conducted by the military, as you pointed out, the Supreme Military Council, sometimes with a committee advice, sometimes without. They just uh, create states. But under the civilian dispensation now, it is almost impossible. What the Senate seems to have done was to compile all the requests that were submitted to the Constitution Amendment Committee. And they are now saying, well, uh, you go back to the procedure outlined in the Constitution, and the beginning of it is to have a referendum in your area. But even if you have a referendum in your area and uh, the people there approve it, how do you go about getting a two-thirds majority in the National the Assembly and uh, the a majority in two-thirds of the state for you to have that uh, state? The only way it can conceivably be done is if the national leadership, let's say the president, sits together with national assembly leaders and all the governors and agrees, for example, on some formula that, okay, maybe let's have, if it is one state for the southeast, or if it is one state by geopolitical, that kind of thing, if you have that kind of consensus, possibly. But even that, 
now will not have much public support because I don't really see how we can have uh, more states in the situation that we have now. That means we'll have more governors, more state assemblies, more senators, uh, 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 more, uh, very, uh, a lot more ministries and commissioners and all other things. How can we cope? Well, we can't cope even with the uh, present arrangement that we have. Actually, you know, if we are serious in Nigeria, the last thing to do is to reduce the number of states. Yes. yes. But of course, uh, that one would be very difficult uh, uh, as well, uh, unless we reach a situation where probably the federation account shrinks uh, so much so that there wouldn't be much money to share at the end of uh, uh, every month. We don't play for that, but uh, if we continue on this path, uh, it may happen uh, in the future. Hmm. All right, and finally. It was a mixed fortune for Nigeria in the face of armed banditry in some states. In Zamfara states, a military fighter jet foiled an attempt by bandits to kidnap 16 persons traveling along the Mihama Tofa Highway. But in Niger state, it was a sad story as bandits abducted the state commissioner for information, Mohammed Sani Idris, from his home. In Kaduna State, five persons were killed in separate attacks by gunmen in Zankokata, local government area of the state. But what you, let's talk about this: um, the fighter jets that followed an attempt to by bandits to kidnap 16 persons in Zamfara State. How did that go? Yes, you see the um, uh, Guso Highway, the Sokoto Guso Highway, the um, Fontua. Guso Road have been under attack by bandits for some time. They're constantly picking people up on the, on, on, on the road. Remember the case of the um, House of Assembly member from Zamfara that was killed, was traveling along uh, one of those um, roads. Now, you can't be sure that you get to your destination. Either you are leaving Guso for Sokoto or leaving Sokoto to Zafar. Uh, yes, uh, to, to Guso. That highway, they've targeted that highway, and there's a forest mm -hmm. along that road that they easily uh, drag people into once they've uh, committed their atrocities. So the Alpha Jet was patrolling the area. It's like maybe after an operation it was um, cycling over the area when he spotted these people. Mm. And the, it had, he didn't use his weapons because it will have killed many people. But it uh, sufficiently frightened them. Okay, but panicking to the Yes, ones. frightened but them because once they, see, uh, once they see an aircraft overhead, they know that there is trouble. So the aircraft was able to frighten them, and then they ran away. Then the people were able to move into their vehicles that had been abandoned. The vehicles were empty, you know. Hmm. So they were able to uh, secure their, um, the release of those guys, and they left the scene. So this is the thing. We need, even for our reconnaissance aircraft, to be patrolling that area because it appears they've left the Kaduna uh, Abuja Highway now. This is what they do. Once they attack an area for so long and, and people, they report uh, prompt uh, the military to secure the area, they, they will go to somewhere else. So right now, the Guso Sokoto uh, Highway, the hot they've been kidnapping people. Even during the salah, some people who are going home and some who are coming back from home were kidnapped by these people. So we need our reconnaissance aircraft to, contra to con constantly cycle over that area and uh, once any threat is discovered, they can send maybe the, uh, the MI-35P, the ground attack helicopter, which they fear so much because uh, it does significant damage. So they can then send it to go and serve them justice so that they can keep a date with their maker. No, no. In in Niger, it seems these um, bandits they've gone away 
for a whole commissioner to be abducted. Mm. That's like a big PD for this bandits. Inside this house. I think the challenge we have now, especially in Niger, is the fact that, like you said a couple of weeks ago, that the bandits in Niger seems to be made of a different hue. They've taken up the duty to fight the government at its own turf. And you know how big Niger is. So I think what we are going to, what we are going to face now is for the armed forces to double whatever they are doing in Niger states. I see what we can get. Because this is a, a known call. The commission of information is as high as you can get as yeah. far as uh, appointments are concerned in the states. And this, the demand is just a stone true from the governors of the states. So we, are, we have to avoid this tragedy based on two realities. One, we commend them for what they are doing in certain parts of the country, mm. but there seems to be that they seem to, to become the epicenter of banditry in our country that we must now face quality. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me go to Mahmoud Jaga now. Jaga, how do we deal with banditry in the northwest, including your own state, Kebi State? Ah, okay. we are all looking for a solution to that uh, terrible uh, problem because it uh, looks like there are dozens, probably even hundreds of bandit camps that are dotting the highways and the rural areas all over the states of the Northwest region and some of the states of the North Central uh, region. It really requires a very serious change of strategy and increase in the number of security personnel, increase in the sophistication of the weapons available to security personnel, deployment of technological tools such as drones and the satellites in order to be able to identify the bandit camps and to respond uh, quickly to incidents of attack on highways or on villages as well as mobilization of local resources such as hunters and uh, traditional uh, institutions because those ones also have a very good knowledge of the rural environment and the forest which is the main strength of the bandits that they seem to have the best knowledge of the bushes where they uh, snatch people and uh, take them to but uh, we also have hunters and the uh, village heads and district heads who also have a good knowledge of that terrain, if only you mobilize them uh, very well. So it's a whole combination of factors that are needed. Hmm. So ultimately, when we are looking at uh, this, we, is there something the government can afford to handle with kid gloves again? Yeah. It's no. something that we must go all out yes. because it's a threat to the yeah, it's even a bigger th threat now from bandits than even um, Boko Haram. Hmm. Because the death of Shekau has really helped us. We now know that, okay, there's just one faction of Boko Haram left, and their own areas, the areas that those ones control, are well known the, the um, islands of Lake Chad mm. and the popular Timbuktu Triangle, that's Gorigi, um, areas close to um, Dambora, all those places. Uh, mm. So we can now focus. Whereas when Shekau was there, Shekau control the uh, Sambisa Forest, um, the, the Mandara Mountains, right up to Goza, and there's um, three, three uh, communities, even in Adama State. Now we know that we, we can face the only group that is left. So, and we are getting results from there because uh, diseases and even constant bombardment they are forcing some of them to come out and uh, surrender to our troops. But even after we have defeated Boko Haram, because that would happen by God's grace, but in the case of bandits, they are literally everywhere now. Hmm. 
what do we do? Is the North Central they, are, they have their presence? North uh, West they have their presence? So um, these are big. They, 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 are, they are present in large numbers. The governor of Zamfara told us that there are up to thirty thousand bandits in the state alone. Okay, and we have them in Casina. We have them in Kaduna. You go to you go to Brinigwari, There are so many of them in Brinigwari area. So then go to Niger. There are so many. Mm, Don't go Gide and and and, uh, and speak. They've infiltrated the south too. So yes, and we have them in the south as well. In the southeast and the uh, southwest, we still have them. So even when we nullify the threat that Boko Haram constitutes, we know that we still have to deal with these bandits and. They are a bigger threat because there are many, they are well armed, and they have many camps. No, the issue of guys, the the issue guys uh, 605 of them said to uh, repentant uh, mm -hmm. fighters, said to her, you know, want to surrender and everything. But a lot of Nigerians are always very skeptical Skeptic, about, yeah. you know, the, this process that these guys, that after some time, when after de radicalizing them, they might just go back to their default mode. Yeah, I, I think we remember the story of the guy that was uh, brought back and ultimately killed his father. Mm. And stole his cat. Uh, and stole his cat. Uh, because they've gone far. It's the same problem they had in Sierra Leone with the kid soldiers. Because somebody who started killing at the age of six, mm. it's not going to change overnight. Mm. When is this ago? It's a trauma. That cannot mm. be wished away. The way of life. Yeah, they have to go back to it. I think what we need to do, because like you said about technology, I just remember that the former chief of the air staff mm. gave us some uh, video clips of what they did from the air at a point in time when they were attacking camps. Mm. I think this is the time to redouble that effort of making sure that, because we have satellites in space, I think Nigeria has about four right now in space, that mm. have our own satellites that we pay for. And this should not be used basically. Maybe you read in Friday or whatever. I know you are like, what well, that's what we paid for. Yeah, let's, let's leave that one for now. <laughs> so what we need to do right now is to isolate those areas and hit them and hit them hard. Because these people are not fighting to get anything from heaven. They are fighting to make to get their money here. Yes. And that one is more dangerous than somebody fighting <laughs> for yeah, that is what do you know what one bandit <laughs> in Casina told my friend? Uh, one of the top people in the government there, he said, the, the person who wants peace, the bandit who wants peace is a coward. Yeah. That's the way he says it, that the coward will never make money. So he was like, ah, is this guy a human being? So the one who comes out for peace is a coward. Is a coward. That's, the way, that's the way they say this thing. So he's saying that he's not interested in going to heaven, that that is the place for the cowards to go. You can see the way they are thinking. As far as he's concerned, he, he wants here. to make his money here. This not is his own effort here. Yes, let him make his money here. He's not interested, you know. A lot of them are just, they don't belong to Islam. They don't belong to Christianity. They are animists, you know. That's the way they are. They don't care. They misbehave any. <laughs> okay, I want to thank you. Gani Kaide Balogu, GKB, thank you for your contribution today. Oh, and I want to thank uh, Mahmoud Jaga. I think Mahmoud Jaga is just uh, making his debut. Yes. Yes. Oh, welcome to the house, Mahmoud. <laughs> and uh, BKO, thank you for your contribution as always. And that's our package today. Join us tomorrow for another episode of the program. And don't forget to join us on Journalist Hangout on Sunday, 1.30 to 3.30 p.m. for Journalist Hangout. We're on YouTube, youtube.com slash TVC News Nigeria. I'm Ayodelius Wagon. See you tomorrow, and God bless Nigeria. <laughs>